Today we want to talk about a case of aspirin toxicity. This is a 35-year-old male who was brought to the ER for evaluation after his family states he swallowed an unknown amount of aspirin this morning. He became upset when his wife told him she wanted a divorce. The patient came to the ER with nausea, multiple episodes of vomiting, and hyperventilating. I have a doctor with me who will be answering questions as we evaluate this patient. Doctor, do you know why he presented like this? Yes, I do know why he presented like this. Aspirin affects both the respiratory and the vomiting centers in the medulla oblongata. His blood work came back from the lab very quickly. What do you expect to see? I expect to see respiratory alkalosis in the blood gas. Why would he be in respiratory alkalosis, doctor? Because he is hyperventilating and blowing off carbon dioxide very rapidly. Very good, doctor. Now look at his chemistry. His bicarbonate is low and his anion gap is wide. What does this tell you? He is in metabolic acidosis with a wide anion gap. Do you know why he is in metabolic acidosis with such an ion gap? Well, aspirin interferes with cellular metabolism, resulting in increased lactic acid and ketones. This eventually leads to wide anion gap metabolic acidosis. What should you expect in severe aspirin toxicity, doctor? I expect several things. One, altered mental status. Two, agitation. Three, hyperpyrexia. Four, non-cardiac pulmonary edema. Tinnitus, which may also occur at therapeutic levels. And six, coma. Look at his serum aspirin level. It's 60 milligrams per DL. What does that tell you? This tells me that he is in the toxic range because the therapeutic range is 10 to 30 milligrams per DL. Here's another question for you. How much aspirin needs to be ingested before fatal aspirin intoxication occurs? 10 to 30 grams in adults and three grams in children. Very good, doctor. Let's review what we have so far. He is hyperventilating, which puts him in respiratory alkalosis. His lactic acid is elevated, which puts him in an ion gap metabolic acidosis. He is vomiting and he reports tinnitus. What do you want to do for him now, doctor? I want to start some fluids. I will start with normal saline, 10 milliliters per kilogram per hour. He weighs. 80 grams so he will receive 800 milliliters per hour for the first three hours. I want to maintain a urine output of 2 milliliters per kilogram per hour. That is 160 milliliters per hour. Doctor, the patient is now coughing profusely. He didn't have that before. Do you think it's the fluid? What do you want to do now? I want to get a stat chest x-ray. Doctor, the chest x-ray shows pulmonary edema. What do you think caused this? Salicylates causes a shift of fluid from the vasculature to both the interstitial and the intracellular compartments. This is aspirin-induced pulmonary edema. How do you want to proceed with this care? Well, I will make sure his airway is not compromised. Doctor, he's breathing at 35 breaths per minute. Would you intubate? No, I would not. Tachypnea is actually working for him. If I intubate him during sedation when he stops breathing, aspirin becomes uncharged and crosses the blood-brain barrier, creating even more toxicity. Well, doctor, are you just going to watch him die? No, he won't die. I will start with two milli equivalents, equivalents per kg of bicarbonate, which is 160 milli equivalents given as a bolus. I will follow up with a bicarbonate infusion of 
150 milli equivalents in one liter of sterile water with 5% glucose. I will also correct hypokalemia if it is present. Doctor, what is your reason for giving the bicarbonate and the potassium? The bicarbonate is to alkalinize both his serum and urine. The kidneys will not excrete aspirin if the urine is not alkalinized. Also, alkalization will not be effective if he is hypokalemic. How long will you alkalinize him? Until his serum salicylate level is below 40 milligrams per DL. Is there another way he could have been treated, doctor? Yes, he could have gotten hemodialysis. His pulmonary edema is an indication for hemodialysis. Good job, doctor. His urine is alkaline, his breathing has slowed down, and his serum level is now 25 milligrams per DL. Please don't forget to call poison control. What GI complications should you keep in mind, doctor? Always keep in mind GI bleeding. Very good. Well, doctor, this is why we do this job. Our patient did well in the ER and was admitted to the ICU. Well, please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. I wish you well. Good night.